Hello! In this video, we're going to look at stochastic processes in trees. Um, I can never remember how to pronounce stochastic, I don't know, kind of crazy. Essentially, it's trees using, or probabilities using trees, or trees with probabilities added on. And just like in some of the other probability sections that we've been looking at in the last couple of videos, you should notice that this is stuff that you've seen before, just with a little bit of a twist. And um, I think stochastic processes, they're pretty fun once you get the idea. At first you're kind of like, I don't know if I believe this. But once you get into it, it's not so bad. So again, we're going to be looking at one of the recommended problems. This is in section 3.3, 3, Stochastic Processes in Trees in the book Finite Mathematics by Daniel P. Mackey and Maynard Thompson. And um, I liked problem 23. It was one of the recommended problems. And uh, let's start by reading out the problem. And then, you know, of course, we're going to go down my list. First, we'll read the problem. Then we'll write down what we know. And then we'll solve the problem. So shouldn't be too bad. There are five quarters, one dime, and three nickels in a drawer. An experiment consists of selecting a coin at random, noting its value, and setting it aside. If it is a dime, the experiment ends. If it is not a dime, then another coin is selected at random, and its value is noted. Find the probability that at least one nickel is selected. And so, you know, this seems kind of crazy. Um, until you shove it into a tree, and then actually it's pretty easy and straightforward. Well, as easy and straightforward as math is going to get. Um, when I first saw these, I was a little freaked out. So let's write down what we know. So first of all, we know that there are... Oops, I want to zoom in a little bit. We know that there are five quarters. I'm just going to write them Q, one dime, I'm just going to do D, and three nickels. Okay, fair enough. And we want to know the probability that after doing this whole crazy thing that we choose at least one nickel. So let's go ahead and uh, start solving the problem. So it doesn't feel like they give us a lot to start with. But again, this is this is kind of like some of the other problems where we've seen where they give us some information and we need to figure out the rest. And so a valuable piece of information here is that there is a total of nine different coins that we're messing around with. And so the next thing we know is that we're in the stochastic processes in trees. And honestly, when I start seeing problems like this, I think tree diagram. So we're going to go ahead and start drawing a tree diagram. Now I know that a lot of professors like to draw tree diagrams going that way. Mine get really messy, so I like to go from the top down. I always find that gives me a little bit more room to spread out, um, and that's always good. So, you know, I draw my box, and that just tells me that's where I'm starting out from. And so my first chance is I'm going to draw a quarter, I'm going to draw a dime, or I'm going to draw a nickel. And you say, hey, Anna, I could choose you know, one of five quarters. Well, there's a trick here, and I'm going to tell you it right now. That is that there is a five out of nine chance that you'll choose a quarter. There is a one out of nine chance that you'll choose a dime. And there's a three out of nine chance that you will choose a nickel at this point. And where did I get those values? Well, let's scroll back up here. So five out of nine, right? or 1 out of 9, or 3 out of 9. So that's that's where I got those percentages, and that's how you do a stochastic process. That's how you use tree diagrams when it starts coming down to probabilities. And so, you know, what else do they tell us? Well, they tell us that if you draw a dime, that's the end. So I like to, like, circle my leaf nodes, or just something to tell me that that's over with. If I don't draw a dime, then I keep going. I draw at least one more coin. In fact, I think I only draw one more coin. If it is not a dime, then another coin is selected at random and its value is noted. Okay, so if it were a quarter, I could draw another quarter. And this is where I like to spread out. I could draw a dime, or I could draw a nickel. And if I drew a nickel, I could draw a quarter. Oops, I can't spell quarter. I could draw a dime or I could draw another nickel. And so this is where things get, get a little funny, because you say, okay, well, this is five of nine. And I go, no, no, it is not. And that's, that's where these get a little tricky. So if we've already pulled one quarter out, that means that this is four. And we've already pulled one, ch one piece of change out, so that means that is eight, right? And if we've already pulled one quarter out, that means 
and we've got one dime, that means we've still got one dime, there's one chance, but there's only eight coins at this point. And nickels, well, there's three, still three nickels that we could have got used to get to this point, but there's only eight coins there. And so, you know, that seems a little bit crazy, but let's do it on the other side and make sure we understand it. Um, let's see, if I drew one nickel, then I would still have five quarters out of a total of eight coins. If I drawn one nickel, I would have one dime out of a total of eight coins. And if I drawn one nickel, well, I drew another nickel, that means I would have two out of eight. So hopefully the math and, and how I got there makes sense. Now one thing I want to point out that's um, not really straightforward and obvious, but if you were to add each of these branches together at any given level, they equal one. So five ninths plus one ninth plus three ninth. It's, well, if you add all those together, they equal one. And if you're not getting that part, the rest of this is going to get a little bit crazy. So let's, let's point out another place where that happens. Ooh, I didn't want to do that. Um, five eighths, one eighth, and two eighths. If you add all those together, you know, just again, that should equal nine. And so, you know, that's one of the tricky things about the stochastic stuff. So let's go ahead and see. Um, what our next step is. It, it seems a little crazy at this point, doesn't it? So I have some extra numbers here. I have to admit, I, I wrote some extra numbers, so hopefully you'd start seeing kind of the patterns that pop up with stochastic, but we don't actually care about all of these numbers. What do we care about? Well, we only care about the chance that I'm going to get at least one nickel out of all of this. And so I'm going to circle the numbers that are important there. So to get a nickel, we're going to follow a tree. And so this is how I like to do it. We could go three ninths and we could do, you know, three ninths, two eighths, we could do three ninths, one eighth, we could do three ninths, five eighths, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of cheating here. Um, you know, sometimes lazy math is not bad math. Since all of these together, if you add them up, they equal nine, that means we can ignore all of those branches. And if we get to this point right here, that means we've got at least one nickel. So the only number we care about is this three ninths. And that's kind of what makes this problem a little bit funky. Um, but trust me on this, you know, they're asking at least one nickel. And so once you hit that one nickel, you can ignore any of the other branches because, because of the property that we talked about where this plus this plus this equals one. And, um, you know, if you don't believe me, do this problem where you figure, you know, three ninths and two eighths and three ninths and one eighth and three ninths and five eighths and you will come up and you'll find that you'll get the same answer I'm going to get with less math and so the less math we can do I think the happier I am at least and so there's another branch where we could get at least one nickel and that's if we go to a quarter and then we go down here and we choose this one nickel so there's there's three numbers I'm going to square them all there's two numbers in this little path that we care about the five ninths and three eighths and then over here there's the three ninths and so when you want to figure out a total, you know, chance or probability that you get at least one nickel, then you use this stochastic process. And so the way this works is if you are going down a branch, so I'm going five ninths and then I'm following it down a branch to this three eighths. If you're going down a branch, you take five ninths times the next thing you run into the branch was this three eighths until you get to the leaf you're looking for. Okay, so you multiply all the things down the branch until you come to the leaf you're looking for. So that's five ninths and three eighths. So remember, and is multiplication. Five ninths and three eighths. So you multiply them together. Or you could go down a different branch or a different path, right? And or is addition. So five ninths and three eighths. So we're multiplying them together. Or three ninths. So you're like, okay, you know, this is this is math, I can do this. So let's see, 5 ninths over 3 eighths, and that ends up being 15 over 72 plus 3 ninths, and you know, I, I can't do that. We have to do some, some craziness here. So let's see, 15 over 72 plus 24 over 72. I multiply both the top and the bottom by 8 so that I could get both of these to have 72 on the bottom so I can add them together and that ends up equaling 39 over 72 and if you divide both the top and the bottom we can clean this up you know you could turn that in and most times that would be
correct, but a lot of times in problems like this, they're going to give you multiple choice, and so you have to clean it up a little bit. So if you divide both the top and the bottom by 3, you get 13 over 24. And that is our answer. So let's zoom out and kind of go over what we did here and why it worked. So the first thing we did, and I'm going to use this nice purple, is we wrote down what we know. And we wrote down what we could imply from the information. So we know that there are five quarters, one dime, three nickels, and we know if you add all those together, there's nine different coins. Then we started with our tree. We started with our box right here. And then we, we figured out our first layer right there. And from that, we figured out, do we continue? Well, on one of them, we hit a dime, and we don't continue on that. On the other two, we could continue. So we drew out you know, all of our leaves. And then we started putting in the different probabilities. So there's a 5 out of 9 chance that if you go, and I'm going to try to make this bright red so hopefully you can see, if you go this way, there's a 5 out of 9 chance that you're going to pull a quarter. Or if you go this way, there's a 3 out of 9 chance that you're going to pull a nickel. Okay. Once you've pulled your first quarter, there's a 4 out of 8 chance that you're going to pull another quarter. There's a 1 out of 8 chance that you'll pull a dime. Or there's a 3 out of 8 chance that you'll pull a nickel. Over here on the right, there's a 3 out of 9 chance that you'll pull a nickel. Once you've pulled that nickel, there's a 5 out of 8 chance that you'll pull a quarter, a 1 out of 8 chance that you'll pull a dime, or a 2 out of 8 chance that you'll pull a nickel. And at this point, we talked about briefly that if you were to add all these chances together, this 5 eighths, 1 eighths, and 2 eighths, that would equal 1. And that is an important concept to understand for stochastic processes. So once we did that, we went and we found our paths that would get us to the things we were looking for. We were looking for at least one nickel. So there was our one nickel on this side, and there was one nickel on this side. And this is getting kind of messy, but I'm just trying to really get you comfortable with the concept of stochastic processes. So uh, once we did that, well, we followed our paths down, and we used our ands and ors. We did some math, we did some math, we did some math, and we got our answer. It's not so bad. Do some practice problems, and I think you will find it not as intimidating as it seems.